What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 11 of our Intermediate Python Programming Tutorial Series and part 2 of our Intro to Multiprocessing. So in the last tutorial we showed how we can spawn separate processes but there was no real communication back to the kind of starting script. So in this tutorial we're going to talk, how to, talk about how to actually retrieve a returned value from um, our process. So first we're gonna start by uh, from multi-processing, we're gonna import pool. And what pool does is just allows us to create a pool of process workers. Then what we're gonna say is define job. Job will take a parameter number and for now we'll just return num times two. Really complicated job. Then again, we'll have if name equals main. And if that's the case, we're going to say p now is equal to actually pool. And then we'll say how many processes we want. Let's just say 20. And then we're going to say data equals p dot map. And then we're going to map the uh, job itself to some sort of iterable. It can be any iterable. So for example, it could be a generator. So we can say range 20. And then we're going to say uh, p.close and then let's print data. And what we're going to get back from data from mapping is actually going to be its own iterable. It'll be a list of values from 0 to 20 times 2. So it should be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. Let's see it. Sure enough, that's what we get. 0, 2, all the way up to 38. So, um... So that's just a really quick example of how we're retrieving information from our processes. Now there are ways to retrieve processes without mapping a function to an iterable. Uh, but real quick, let me just show you, like we could do the file, like it, it can just be like a list like this, right? Two, four, six, eight. Um, but it also could just be like a single value. So you could just do four right and you get returned back an eight or it could be a string and this does something to a string and so on so you can do mapping with just a single value and like i said there are other ways without doing mapping but i feel like with mapping it just makes sense because you can either map a single value if you really wanted to i'm not sure why you would have a single value to a single function um with and, and need multi-processing but there you go but in most cases you're going to use some sort of iterable in this case we've got just four, <laughs> there's nothing to it, but you can put through a uh, generator to or a list or whatever you want. So um, you can do that, but you can also do like the following. So you could say, uh, we'll do range five here, and then we can copy this. And then if you wanted to do something else, like maybe it's a different function, where you only have the one function, but say you wanna do a different function with a different process, um, we'll just say data2 equals that, print data2. You can, of course, do this as well. Okay, so that's how you can get information back from your processes. Uh, really pretty simple to understand, but if you have any questions, comments, whatever, feel free to leave them below. For now, we're going to be leaving multiprocessing behind. I'll try to weave it into a much greater example um, as we go on. Uh, the next topic that we're going to start talking about is object-oriented programming. So hopefully at some point I will be able to weave in something simple enough. Actually, I've decided to go ahead and just do the next tutorial as being uh, utilizing multiprocessing with Beautiful Soup to parse multiple websites at a time. So we're going to contain that little mini project all in one video. And then in the next video, we'll be getting into object-oriented programming. So that's what you have to look forward to. Questions, comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.